Welcome to the Play 21 Mini Let's Plays and today we have with us Daniel Benmerji from Argentina with his game Storyteller. Welcome. Hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Very well. So, and uh, to kick this off, we have a little warm up. I start some sentences and you try to finish them. Are you ready for that? Okay. All right. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So this morning I drank uh, a latte. Great. My main occupation is uh, making events. I would describe myself as uh, very busy. Mm. My superpower is being nice to people. The thing I'm holding <laughs> in my hand most of the time is... Uh, okay, I have, I have an answer for that. I, I choose the second one. Yeah, trust me. Uh, a mouse. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, during the pandemic, I... Cried a lot. Oh. Um, and after the pandemic, I will... Cry a lot. Mm. Um, I'm creating interactive works because, uh, because you can't help it. <laughs> okay. And, uh, last and, uh, probably biggest one, the future of games will be, very diverse. Cool. Well, that, that's a, that's a bright. Uh, way to look at things. Yes, diverse. I hope for that too. So um, that was a short warm up, and I would say let's jump in the game. Um, okay. Storyteller, and it's kind of a book, I can see. Yes, it is a book. Ooh. Storyteller is uh, uh, is is a game in which you are given an empty book that mm -hmm. only have titles in characters uh, to them, like. Something like this, like each one of the pages look like, looks like this, in which there's a title, there are settings, there are characters, and you have to make a story mm -hmm. that fulfills that title. Oh, right? okay. Not any story, only yeah. the story, a story that fits the title, right? So in this case, it says double safe self poisoning, and you have a bunch of settings down here, right? So one has things that happens is that uh, when there's when there's poison, you know, characters want will not uh, mess with the poison unless they have a good reason to, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So in order to uh, get them to mess with the poison, we need them to be uh, feeling strongly about something, right? So one thing we can do is that uh, we can get these, these two characters married to each other, right? Aww. See, when, when you put them together, they fall in love, right? Sure. And then we can get one of them to die, right? So yes, now sir. keys are broken, mm -hmm. right? So when when he when we put him with poison, he just drinks it, right? Because he's half broken. Mm. So now he's dead too. Both are dead, right? But we need a double self poisoning, right? But I mean, she's dead and he's yeah. dead. So what do yeah. we do now? One thing we can do is just let's bring one of them back from the dead, right? It's very convenient. So let's bring yes. let's bring her, yeah, yeah exactly. So let's bring her. But it turns out that when she comes back to life. He's, he's, he's dead because he drank poison. So now she has a good reason to drink poison as well, right? So this this case, this is one of the uh, levels in the middle. It's not one of the beginner games, but I wanted to show it to you because it has, it's obviously obviously has an influence from uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, it's sure. a sort of a synthetic version of that of that story. Uh, and, and also shows that uh, there's a uh, storyteller is being run uh, with a continuity engine. We build something like that. That uh, it's a it's a technology. What that that what it does is uh, start looking at everything that you placed on onto the frames and start you know creating meaning and creating plot uh, of of what's of what's happening during that story, right? So sure. the game reflects back to you uh, how how the things inside the game react, all are configured by that continuity engine that we did. Uh, and, uh, so this is I say that the magic of storyteller is in that continuity engine and the fact that you can use 
which is the most interesting part of the game, I think, is that uh, we are using information that you bring from the outside world into the game, right? We didn't teach you how, you know, marriage or love or death works. You sort of know, right? Uh, so that's information they bring from the outside. We don't need to tutorialize that. We don't need to tell you, hey, you know, people can die uh, and, and people who love dead people are sad. We don't need to teach you that, right? Yeah. So Wait, we uh, are right, leveraging the... F right. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of room to play around, but I, I would uh, ask myself, um, so basically it's also a puzzle, but you have the freedom to tell a story. So uh, how do you do that? Do you have to work through all the puzzles uh, with different solutions or is there just one given end and you are free to choose the way until there? So, so how much freedom do we have in actually doing a story and trying to fit in the puzzle? Right, that's a very good question. So, as I said, we have a continuity engine. What, that what it does is is deduces what happened in your story, right? It it makes a deduction. Sure. Like, okay, this character died. This character is heartbroken now. This character drank poison. This character came back to life. So it builds a very long uh, internal plot, right? So each one of the levels, what it does, it says, well, let's look for one thing, like for whatever the title says. Like in this case. All he's doing is taking a look at the plot and saying, did, did, did two self-poisoning happen or not, mm -hmm. right? So in between that question and what the continuity engine does, uh, we don't control what happens in the middle, right? Uh, we control what the continuity engine does and we control what the level asks for. Cool. But in yeah. the middle, you may come up with a story that does not, uh, that is not what we, initially thought would be the solution to this level, right? So in this case, one thing that we could do is, is what if instead of reviving her, we revive him, right? But mm -hmm. he's still sad, right? Because, man, I, I drank for him because yeah. I was sad. I know you brought me back to life. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm still feeling shitty. I don't want to be here. So uh, we can get the double potion in this way, right? Yeah. So it gave us, uh, gave us the goal anyway. So the amount of freedom that you have to solve the levels, we do have a bit of control because we give, we give you a limited set of elements. So we don't want to, we don't want you to be able to break or solve the game in two frames very quickly without thought, right? We want each one of the levels to be interesting, but there are some levels in which we leave you a bit more room to uh, to find your solution to the to the levels, and it happens because it keeps happening. That people find solutions that we haven't thought of. Uh, ah, that's interesting. And, and you know, they, and, yeah. they, and the game and the game responds to that. You know, often when that happens, uh, uh, we 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 take a look at it and think, do we need to add something specific for this this small story that people made? Do we need to prevent it because it's sort of cheating? Do we make a new level based on that idea that this person had? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so, right. we, we, so, so we think I about saw, it. Yeah, I, I saw that there are, uh, in some levels, you have achievements uh, like uh, try to achieve this goal in a multitude of ways. Uh, so you have to restart again and try and try out. But um, I, yeah, so so is the, is this, are those actually, um, how do I say? So how do you know that you can solve it in multiple ways? Uh, do you try it out yourself and then you say, okay, this level has this number or is there a mechanism behind? No, I mean, what, 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 what we often do is, you know, come up with, the, with some elements, uh, um, like, let me show you something else. Uh, say, uh, say in Crown Suitors, you have a dungeon mm -hmm. and you have a guy that is evil and can, you know, lock people sure. up. Yeah. Uh, also, he can uh, disguise himself as a dragon, right? So what we do often is we come up with these elements, right? There is a disguise and this character can disguise himself as something, right? Also, we have a dungeon and people can get locked up in the dungeon. And once they are locked up, they cannot, you know, be placed in the story anymore unless you free them somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we come up with these small, small elements and then we put them together in a, in a, in a large level that we call sandboxes, in which we have all the, you know, a bunch of elements. And then we start playing ourselves and see, okay, what happens? What ideas do we get from this, right? What, what funny situations happen? And then we feed those ideas back into the engine. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the funnier stories, the more interesting stories, we make into level, we shape into actual levels, yeah, right? Great. But once, once we do that and we give the level to people, people start trying different things that we did not try. Yeah. And they figure out different corners of the idea. 
And then we need to decide, do we feed them into the engine? Do we prevent them? Do we do something else? Mm. Is this completely wrong? And do we need to rethink the whole thing, which happens pretty often nice. as well? And, uh, and uh, will there be, will, will there be uh, um, a way where you just do your own stories without the puzzle in between? You know, like an, a, a thing you get at the end of the of the game when you did all the puzzles, then you can create your own stories with all the stuff you had in the game. We're we're yeah we're we're thinking about that because one thing well, that we yeah. realized when when you, when we started giving that that option to people is it's very daunting to have a lot of you know a giant toolbox yeah. and you know being able to do whatever you want. It's like what are, what what do I even want to do right? Sure. Uh, it's, it's too big, but we are uh, we are um, experimenting with doing uh, small sandboxes, in which we may give you a laundry list of stuff that could happen. Like yeah, make cool. this character be make this character who is evil uh, be very sad, right? Mm. So then maybe you use the vampire along with you know a Genesis character, and God shows up, and you know the guy is sad, and you know silly things like that. Uh, we want to give you an option to, you know, have have more freedom to do things your way, or or, or build the build, build things your way without, you know, having to be clever about how to solve uh, a particular puzzle. So we are cool. definitely going to give you that. I am looking yes. forward to it. And um, so, so storyteller itself, uh, it it also came quite a long way, right? So you um, restarted the game. Uh, it was I, I don't know when you did the first one. It was a couple of years ago. It was uh, looking completely different. And uh, yeah. the last couple of years, I, I guess you were working on you know just bringing it there where it is. So how did you start the idea? When did you get the idea? And uh, how did you uh, work with this? Um, yeah, transfer to. Yeah. To know. So actually, the first version of Storyteller happened in 2008. That was wow. a very, very long time ago. Yeah. So the the initial idea of, of of that prototype of the game, which you know I could I could try to show you, but you know it's a flash game, doesn't work anymore. So uh, I can I can actually show you show it to you. Uh, but uh, uh, it, what what I wanted to do is to give you you know the elements of the story and let you play around with it that 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 was what you know started kickstarted storytelling you know often often we are given stories or we're giving branches right of of all the possible possible things that could happen in a story but i wanted you to, to give you more freedom like what if you do silly things with the story as well right what if sure. you could you know warn the hero what was going to what's going on or what would happen if you want the villain to win or what? What if you wanted to do a completely crazy story with those characters uh, that you know is not in any way related to the original story? So that's that that started because when I was little, I, I, I always wanted to be able, you know, when I had these children, children, children's books and stuff with illustrations, I would look at the illustrations and think, oh man, I wish I could manipulate this somehow and change the story, right? Sure. But it was a book. It only came with one story. So Storyteller is uh, an attempt at trying to uh, build that space where you can play around with the stories. Cool. And and what happened between this prototype and now? Well, it's a very it's a very difficult game to design. I would say of all these things I've designed my whole life, this is by far the hardest one because Storyteller walks a very fine line between what we can suppose you know or or how you believe things work how does death work how does mm -hmm. love work uh so the game needs to walk a very fine line in which things make sense to you but they also make sense to the continuity engine at the same time so there is no a disconnect we have to avoid a disconnect between the two things otherwise you start thinking why does doesn't this work it should work right sure. uh so we work a very fine line in which each one of the rules of the game goes through like four or five iterations and we have hundreds of those rules right so it's very difficult to make and uh some some basic things about the interactions uh there are there are several clever ideas in this game and it took me a very long time to come up with them so the first version of the game we don't have any any of these toolbox down here we didn't have any of that things were just floating inside the frames uh then i realized hey maybe we can have a toolbox then maybe we can also have uh settings right 
and and those things took me a long time to figure out I, and i mean like like world clock time right real real time not sure. time of be sitting but i i need i need to put away i needed to put away the game for a while and then come back to it and think oh yeah wait i know i know how to solve that problem that i've struggled with for a year right so my policy my design policy for storyteller has been to work on it then if i get stuck then I work on something else, I, you know, leave the game I and see. come back to yeah, it a year so. or two later. <laughs> so that's why it took, took 13 years to make. And then two years ago, we signed with Annapurna Pictures, uh, uh, Annapurna Interactive actually, uh, to publish the game. And now they won't let me, they won't let me freeze the game again. So I need to finish it this time. <laughs> I, I don't, well. I don't get, I, I, I don't get, I don't get to do that anymore, I guess. Uh, so uh, we are now in the, in the, in the final, like in the final stretch of the game. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for that. There's, there's one final <laughs> question as well because yeah. uh, you know the clock it's already run out. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but uh, one really interesting part is, uh, as you mentioned before, is that uh, you try, um, uh, you have to come up with symbols people can understand, and uh, the game for that is quite open. Uh, so, for example, which characters can love each other? It's not you know just a man and woman. It could be anything. It's uh, completely open for your own interpretation. What you like. Um, so, but um, would you say that uh, with those kind of rules that you are influencing how people uh, look at their society, their, their their surroundings, or is it more like a reflection of the world, which is what what is more true? Did you encounter things like that where you thought, okay, this is maybe not like it is in the world right now, but it should be? Okay, so actually, what I think in general, not just for Storyteller, but most games I made, um, is that actually games reflect, you play games reflecting how you think or how you work in real life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's the other way around. How, how games influence you and all that, it, you know, it is a subject in, in itself, but I find it way more interesting the way how you, when you sit down and play, what you do is actually a reflection of several of your mental uh, thought processes and you're not aware of it. You know, recently I made a game uh, that is a Pac-Man. Uh, it's a very small game. I haven't announced it, you know, in general. It's a small game I did for, a, for an event, which is a Pac-Man for two players, right? It's a collaborative, Pac-Man. And my goal for that game was to make it uh, for couples, right? Mm -hmm. oh. It's a game designed for couples because it requires it requires coordination because uh, all the roles of the two things is, asymmet is asymmetrical in that game. So you need to realize what your role should be and then execute and then execute a sort of dance in order to succeed the level. And I, and I built it, we built it thinking of how Thinking whether, you know, we're going to see a couple dynamics reflected into the game. And it did happen. It was awesome. You know, during the event, you know, couples came and played. And you can see the complete, they, they, they played the game completely differently. We have, you know, couples in which one of the two partners yelled at the other the whole time. Sure. Uh, what, <laughs> what they should have been doing. Uh, yeah. You know, shouting our orders at the other one. Uh, we had others that, you know, really like to... Could, could coordinate easily, but could not, you know, the verbal communication was not good. The game requires a lot of verbal communication in order to say, hey, you go there and I and I wait here. So when you pass on, I protect you from the ghosts uh, and stuff like that. But it, it needs verbal communication. And it's what I wanted. So that that was a, a, a one one of my attempts at, uh, at, 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 you know, developing something that reflects this idea I have that if, if I saw you play games, I could actually deduce things about you by the way uh, you handle uh, video games. Nice. Okay, very well. Uh, so oh, wait, 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 one, 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 one more thing, because you said <laughs> one, you one went thing. overtime with almost every, 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 everyone, yeah, and I I'm not going to be any less. <laughs> so uh, one other thing I would say, I wanted to say about Storyteller is that some people complained about, you know, this is, uh, this game is, is not very, uh, you know, is heteronormative or stuff like that. And I was like, but you're, you didn't try any of the things of the other possibilities, right? So it's it's not the game that is acting like that. It's you, right? It it did happens to us a couple of times. But the game is not saying anything about gender in this story. It's, you are now. Uh, well, it's it, anyway. it's in the rules, kind of. You know that that, that right. it, it could be forbidden, but you decided to open it up for everything. 
Uh -huh. So th this is kind of a reflection of what you think. So if you program it in, then, <laughs> you know. <laughs> No, 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 I mean, I was like, yes, yeah, sure. I mean, there's, there is a sort of a bit of, an, uh, of a statement, yeah. but I find it more interesting to see what people do with it. Sure. There's, there's one I mean, of the, that, one of the, the thing, extra right? goals. Yeah, it's it's about uh, creating this this freedom. The, 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 yeah, it's, for, it's the players who can decide what to do with it then in the end. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, really over time. Uh, it was uh, great talking to you, uh, seeing the game a little bit. Um, so uh, people, please check out Storyteller and uh, try it out. Buy it as soon as it uh, gets online. No, I, I, I don't. You can you can already play the demo. There's a yeah, public that, that's thing. That's great, but, but I um, not allowed to make advertising. Ha! <laughs> 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 okay, um, but you can do. And you did, I think. So, um, great. <laughs> then uh, see you at the festival. I'm looking forward to this couple game as well. That sounded like something we should have have in the exhibition as well, but maybe. Yeah, not. we're going to we're going to have news about that soon with the team. Yeah. Very nice. Well, um, thanks for being here. Have a great day. And, yep. Thank uh, you. Thank you for having me. It was fun. It was fun. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.